So the reason this video exists is because I'm an idiot. We already knew that, Vic. Yeah, everyone knows I'm an idiot. So when Thunderhead Creations sent the original Blaze Borrow Tank package in, I looked at the stainless steel one, which I'm still using. Here it is here, which I'm still using in the... Uh, and I forgot to switch this on. Hold on. This is how much of an idiot I am. I forgot to switch on the second camera to match up with this. So I'm still using the sliding glass door version of the Blaze Borrow. Here it is here. It's in the V-Pon Titer right now. I use this thing all the time. Both of them. Uh, the Blaze Borrow sliding glass door and the V-Pon Titer. <laughs> Huge fan of this setup. Huge fan of this setup. Love it. So, I looked at the box and there was two tanks. There was one black one and there was a stainless steel one. And I thought to myself, oh, that's nice of Thunderhead. They've, created, they've, they've popped in two of the same tank. It wasn't the same tank, though. <laughs> and Can, I hope I'm saying his name right, Can from Thunderhead, sent me an email going, Vic, did, did we include a double sliding glass door tank in there? Or was it just two singles? And I thought, well, I'm, 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 it was two tanks. It's two singles. And I looked at the box and the, the other box that had this in it, and then I seen that. Glass door, glass door. I'm an idiot. And I apologised profusely to Can and said, yeah, I'll do the review of this as well. <laughs> like, duh. <laughs> That's what I get for not paying attention. Plus, in my own defence, I was in a lot of pain because at that point in time, it was like a month and a half ago, and I was in the middle of the stomach operations, the first two or three of them. So, you know, my head wasn't quite there. Not that it ever is, to be honest. So it's time for a look at the double sliding glass door edition of uh, Mike Vape's Borrow Tank. It's a tank review! <laughs> So before we head to the table cam, yes, I'm gonna be I'm gonna keep saying this until you can't vote anymore. It's the Vapor Round 2024 Awards link at the top of the description. Make yourself a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, get a chocolate biscuit or a hobnob if you're like me. There is a lot of very well-known British-based brands that are listed, whether it's British vendors, whether it's British e-liquid manufacturers, or whether it's British shops, including reviewers like myself in there. So uh, yeah, get yourself a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, chocolate biscuit, and spend five to ten minutes on the Vape Around Award down there. And if you feel like it, give Vaping with Vic a vote. Go on. You know you want to. Let's spin round and see what this thing's all about. So it's essentially the same tank that we looked at before, which is this one here, right? It's that one there, and since I've got this in my hand. Mm. Constantly using that tank now. Constantly using it. It's the same as that tank, except there's two sliding glass doors, which means you can actually see through it. Now, there's a reason that this happened. There is a lot of newer designed borrow devices. For instance, we've got this thing, which is uh, which is the, I um, can't remember what the hell this is called now. It's this thing from the folks at Death Wish and Suicide Mods, um, where they have the tank mounted sideways like that, but you can see both sides of the tank. So that means if we pop this in here, like that, like that, and then we screw this down, and then we pop the doors on, it means that instead of having one side blocked off, you're now able to see both sides of the tank and see how much liquid is actually in. So if it was the single sliding glass door, one of these sides would basically be blocked off. That's the reason Mike Vapes and Thunderhead went with a double glass door on this. So it doesn't matter what side you look at, you'll be able to see the amount of liquid that's actually in the tank. And there is a lot of bore. In fact, here's one here. It's Mike Vapes' own one, actually. This thing. The Blaze AIO, again, there is windows on either side, and that's the reason that this tank was made with a sliding glass door on each side. Oh, pop you in. Don't lose the drip tip, Vic. 
I'm going to pop you there. And I'm going to pop these doors in so I don't bloody lose them, which I'd done about a day after I reviewed it. One of the doors fell off the table. I couldn't find it for an hour. Started panicking. So yeah, it's got the same airflow pins that the single sliding glass door one has. So this one is... Uh, 1.2 millimetres, very, very thin, very thin. It's going to be good for a airy mouth to lung draw. You've got 2 millimetre in a diameter, restrictive direct to lung. You have got 2.5 millimetre diameter, semi restrictive direct to lung. And the one that I like to run with is the 3 millimetre diameter, still restrictive direct to lung, but a little bit more airy than the other two. Put it that way. So the doors, obviously, sliding glass doors, they will simply slide off like that. There's one off there. Pop that there. And there is another one on the other side. Pop that off there. And uh, yeah, sliding glass door. And you can see all the way into the tank. I'm going to pop the one in the back back on again. Here we go. Slide that all the way up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pop a coil in here. So what we need to do, because it's an older style, more standard style borrow tank, the pin at the bottom, give it a push. The whole thing will slide out. Then what you do is you grab the main chamber and you unscrew the chimney. Don't lose that. Pop the chimney to one side and this little fella pops out. Pop you off and what you're looking at, whoops, what you're looking at is basically the same deck and same layout as the one we looked at with the single sliding glass door. 510 threading at the base, which means you can screw this thing onto a build deck. And let's pop a coil in here, actually. Is this thing charged? I think it is. Yes, is it? It better be. Yes, it is! Because I forgot to charge it the last time. So let's screw you down, and we're going to need an Allen key for this thing. Hold on, let's get these out. Probably going to be the one that fell out. Is it going to be that one? No. Nope. Nope. That must be that one. You would think I would know the size has been out. There we go. Spin you round. There we go. Perfect. Right. What we're going to be popping in here is we're going to be popping in a three core. Classic alien in here, nothing too fancy. And we're going to cut the legs down to 5mm. Using the old coily tool. So 5mm. Let's pull this out so you can see what I'm doing. Cotton, going to need that later on. And I'm going to need the scissors. Right, 5mm. Oh, these things, by the way, are phenomenal. N nip, nip, X. They've got, it's got a little thing there that grabs onto the end of the leg. You just snapped off so it doesn't go flying off and you end up stepping on it later on. You can get them off of Amazon. Very cool. Right, let's get this and let's pop you in here. So the way that this works, as you would expect, coil, oh, zoom you back in, coil goes along like that. Juice intake, juice intake. Very easy to set up, very easy. I'm going to pop one leg in there, and then we're going to pop the other leg in there. Give the whole coil a wiggle so it settles in. Then we're going to hold this thing down. If you feel the coil moving around when you're screwing it down, don't worry, you can sort that out once the legs are all tucked in place. Let's just screw you down, spin it round, and then screw you down. Perfect. Now, we're going to grab the coil. No, oh, I'm not doing that for you, idiot. Uh, coil master, where are we? Here we are. Uh, we need to get that one. Nope. Oh, I've picked out the wrong one. It'll be that one. Yep. Let's just pull you into the middle. Roughly into the middle. How's that looking? That's looking good. Okay, let's give it a settle in burn. Let the heat do the work for you. Don't go in there and rake it too early. That'll do it. Right. 
give that a rake. That is looking good to me. How's the inside looking? Inside is looking good. Okay. Make sure that's cooled down. See, that's the thing about the blazes. The blazes, that's, this is including the tanks. The blazes have always been really, really easy to coil on because Mike's went for the postless deck system in this, which makes it extremely easy to coil these things up. Uh, cotton God's Cotton, not a sponsor. I just like using them. Uh, I don't need that much. That is way too much cotton. Uh, there, there we go. That should do it. Oops. Spiky bit. So, we're going to pinch and twist one end here. We're going to feed that through. Squeak, squeak. Back and forth a bit. Now, here's the trick with this. There is two ways you can basically wick this. Depending on what kind of liquid you're using. This is what I found out with uh, this fella here when I was reviewing it. Mm. If you're using Max VG, I would suggest that you have some cotton sticking out the juice intake here. If you're using standard 7030, I would suggest just getting enough cotton to reach halfway down that juice intake. So you're looking at that bit there and leaving the part at the bottom empty. But if you're using Max VG, which is basically what I'm using here with the peach custard, it's practically 90 VG. If it wasn't for the fact, if it wasn't for the fact that the flavouring was based on PG, it would practically be Max VG because I even buy my nicotine now in VG, not in PG, because I just I don't agree with propylene glycol. I've got a very very slight um, allergic reaction to propylene glycol these days, which is which is fun when I'm trying to review disposables, considering disposables are 50-50. So because I'm using Max VG, I am going to be cutting these a little bit longer, right? So there we go, and there we go there. Oops, that's a little bit too much. Hold on, uh, there we go. Let's just do that. We're going to level this up, and then we're going to go in with the needle tip tweezers, and we are going to rake this out just slightly, not too much. Just going to rake out the looser stuff, make things a little bit more tidy. That'll do it. Snap and snap. And now what I'm going to do is I am going to... Oh, is that level? Yes, it is. I am going to grab this, literally grab it. Hold on, bring this into a point. Literally grab it. And then we're going to tuck that in from the side. Like that. And basically feed it through. And once it's fed through, then... I'm going to get one side of the pointy bit and I am going to essentially punch holes through the cotton so it breaks up the end that I've compressed and what you're now seeing, see that? There is a tuft of cotton sticking out down the bottom. Now I'm going to get more into this when we head up to the table cam but it's, this is only if you're using basically Max VG as close to 90% because you, you can't get 100% VG liquids. It's impossible because practically all of the, of the flavorings is propylene glycol based, but you can get pretty damn close to 90 VG, which is what my peach custard is. So I'm gonna grab this in and then I'm gonna feed it in like that. Just let the tweezers do the feeding, just like that. And then we're gonna go back in So you're trying to do this on a two inch screen on the camera, it is hard, right. Then we're going to go back in with the tweezers and we are going to punch holes and push the bottom of that cotton down. Until you start seeing tufts of that cotton show out at the bottom. 
you can see just about see tufts of cotton sticking out the bottom and tufts of cotton sticking out the bottom on the other end now let's juice this thing up peach custard as always just drop a little bit of liquid onto there There we go, and then juice up the ends and the other end. Perfect. Now we cap this thing off by putting the chamber back on. Unscrew it. I might have juiced it up a little bit too much actually. And then drop you back in there, grab a hold of it. Pop the chimney in the other end, screw the chimney on, and then we line up the base for the base to basically pop out like that. And there's the main chamber in. We get the other sliding glass door part. Pop you in and leave enough of a gap to get our Gorilla bottle in there and fill this thing up. Just like that, might have filled up a little bit too much. That was close, right? <laughs> close you off, and there we go. The double sliding glass door version of Mike Vapes and Thunderhead Creations Blaze Borrow Tank. Let's get my age old favorite, the little V Pond Tighter. In fact, you know what? Let's not use the V Pond Tighter. Let's get uh, where is it? Where is it? We'll get Mike Vapes. Blaze AIO out. It's only fair because we're using the blaze tank. Let's pop you off. Unscrew you. Pop you in. I don't have a battery in this. No, I don't. There we go. Now what we need to do is pop a battery in here. And like that, and we're off. Start off at 40 watts, just like that coil bed in. <sighs> bubbles, bubbles, bubbles. That's what you want to see now. Let's bump this thing up. Coil's coming out at 0.3 ohms. Bang on. We're going to head up to 60 watts now. Here we go. I wouldn't recommend this, by the way, if you're not used to direct lunging 6 milligram free base. A little bit stingy, but it's working. I better stop, otherwise I'm going to get a head. Yeah, I'm doing 6 milligram direct. 3 milligrams is not enough. Because with three miles chain bait, chain bait, just like you've seen there, except it was all fucking day. That's why I bumped it back up to six milligrams. Three milligrams just not have got all those bubbles. That's what you want to see now. Before we get into this, the reason I started doing two wicking methods. Now, this is not going to apply to the bulk of you watching this, because the bulk of you are probably mixing your liquids to the industry standard, which is 70 VG, 30 PG. However, if you end up climbing above 80 VG and you're getting close, you're getting close to what is essentially nine, because look at this. This is like a syrup sloshing around in here. This is my own peach custard and the nicotine that I buy is VG based nicotine. The only PG that goes into that bottle is from the flavourings and it makes up about 10, 15% of the mix, so about, you're looking at 85, 90, depending on how I mix it, 85, 90% VG that's in, it's thick, 
it is very thick and I started to notice something that I didn't really notice with the first sliding glass door review because at that point in time I was using, where is it? I was using one of the fluid liquids which is basically 70 VG so it's slightly thinner than the peach custard but I started to notice something um, down at the base, you see not on the table cam, right underneath there so you've got the you've got the juice well that you put your cotton into and underneath that and on the outside of the tank there's the opening that lets the liquid up what i was starting to notice with the thicker the very thick liquid if you let liquid in there's got to be a way for air to get out and generally speaking the air comes out from one of the juice intakes look at any tank any tank, whether it's a borrow tank, whether it's a standard rebuildable tank, one of those juice intakes is going to let air out and the other juice intake, especially for a borrow tank, there's only two, the other juice intake will let the liquid in. And notice with the thick liquid that the air was being trapped. So there was a bot, there was like an air bubble essentially that was trapped in the juice intake that was supposed to be letting the air out. So because that juice intake was essentially blocked, the other juice intake was the only one that was letting the air out and the juice in. Now the way I vape, especially the way I vape, I chain vape. So I pick up the mod, chain vape, chain vape, chain vape, chain vape, chain vape, cloud out and then I put the mod down. Now when you chain vape like me, if both the juice intakes are not letting liquid in, one of them's blocked essentially with an air trapped bubble underneath the intake you're going to get us you're not going to get a, a full dry hit but you're going to feel it that slight scratching is more than normal which is the sign that your cotton's starting to dry out so that's why i come up with the idea of something that i don't normally do i normally use the dam method which is like putting the cotton in a, about a millimeter down the juice well to dam off the liquid from flooding the deck what i done with this is I, and the, the, the single sliding glass door, and what I've done with this and the single sliding glass door one, because I'm using thick liquid, I push the cotton all the way through. So there's cotton sticking out of the juice intake at the bottom of the actual chamber. And the reason I've done that is simple. It pushes the air blockage away from the juice intake which means as you chain bait, chain bait, chain bait, because the cotton's sticking out, the air bubble forms, it can't be trapped underneath the actual juice intake, so the air bubble's released and it lets more liquid in. The only time you'll need to wick that way is if you're using 85 to 90 VG liquid, which I'm betting about 80% of you are not. You're using 70 VG industry standard so the dam method it'll work just fine for you it'll work fine Six milligram. That was fun. I'm this close to seeing pink elephants on parade. If I was going to get a dry hit, it would have done it in the fourth hit. It would have done it in the fourth hit again. I mean, look at all the bubbles that are just, look at all, loads of little bubbles up there. Again, the dam method will work fine if you're using 70 VG. The only time you need to put the cotton straight through to the bottom is if you're like me and you're using very, very thick liquid very thick liquid so uh, yeah what do i think of this tank well it's the same as this same as this the single sliding glass door that i've got in the v pontita again peach custard and again running at 60 watts it said this has got a fuse clapton and this has got a three core alien in it i now have one two 
I've now got four Blaze AI O tanks on the go, and this one's never out my hand, and this one's going to be never out my hand as well. I am a big fan of the Blaze AI O tanks. They're easy to coil on, they're relatively easy to wick on. Again, it depends on how thick the juice is, but they're relatively they're easy to coil on, relatively easy to wick on, and more importantly, with the two new tanks, these two here, with the way that Mike Vapes and Thunderhead has rejigged the air intake, they're giving fucking phenomenally good flavour. Phenomenally good flavour because of the way the air is hitting the coil. So yeah, these two are never going to be out of my hand now. They're never going to be out of my hand. And the good thing about the double sliding glass door version, you can see all the way through it. The good thing about this is if you're using that this mod I forgot the fucking name the rift that's it if you're using something like the rift that's got doors on both sides you're gonna love this because it doesn't matter what door you open you've got access to a sliding glass door you've got a glass door on the left glass door on the right you've got a door on the left door on the right and there's a lot more mods that are going to start looking like this by the way with doors on both sides so it doesn't matter what side of the AIO mod that you open up, you've got access to the actual tank to slide the glass door down, fill the thing up and slide the glass door back up again. I am surprised there isn't more borrow tanks out there that are using a double sliding glass door system like this, because it makes it fucking far easier to fill, far fucking easier to fill, and you can see through both sides of the tank, which is fucking phenomenally good, phenomenally good. <laughs> I've switched you off a mistake. Yes, I have, because I'm an idiot. Hold on. There we go. So, it doesn't matter which one of the newer uh, Blaze borrows that you buy, whether it's the single sliding glass door or the double sliding glass door. Personally, I would go for the double sliding glass door. It doesn't matter which one you buy. The decks are similar. They are basically the same. The only difference between the two is one's got one sliding glass door and the other's got two sliding glass doors. But the flavour out of both of them oh, is so good. So good, the flavour that comes out of them. Again, that's also dependent on what kind of coil you're putting in. Fuse Clapton, dual core Fuse Clapton, triple core Alien, you'll go fine with those two coil types. <laughs> Run them at around about 50 to 60 watts. If you want a little bit of a hotter vape, 70. I wouldn't push it above 80. It'll get too hot by that point in time. And there we go. The dual sliding, which I should have reviewed with the single sliding, but I didn't even know I had a dual sliding tank in there because I'm an idiot. Big thanks to the folks over at Thunderhead Creations and Mike Bapes for sending them over for a review. If you thought this review sucked, you know, to do down below, thought it was good, give it a thumbs up. Very far side at the top, you've got the latest video, no matter what video you're watching on the channel. And hey, that's latest What's Up Sunday update vlog in the middle. Shout out to the hashtag Flu Army, the Patreon subscribers, and the YouTube members for keeping me afloat financially. That's what's keeping me in a job, and underneath me is the Vapenbit. We'll click on that to subscribe, as always, folks. Thanks for watching, and have a good one.